Hello and welcome to this Construct 3 tutorial on how to create a generic save and load system. Um, so this is a little demo application I've created with red and green blocks. You can create extra red and green blocks like this one. And the only purpose they serve is that they create a situation you can save and load into a game save slot. Um, so how does it work? You create a situation like this one. You press save and then you enter a name. There are four already saved one before. It's called demo one. Let's call this one demo two, for example. And I press save. And then this is the situation I've saved. What I can do now is change the entire situation like that. And then uh, I press the load button. I select the demo two I've just created. I press load and then we have the same situation again. Of course, if I change something and I press save and I select some existing uh, slot, I am being prompted if I want to override yes or no. I click yes and I override the save game slot. So that's functionally what it does. Let's see how this works in practice. So let's go to the main layout. There's actually only one main layout here. Um, and you'll see that that's just a base layer where the buttons here at the right hand side are and the blocks. Uh, but there's also separate layers for each dialog. You can see here save di dialog, the load dialog and the confirmation dialog are separate layers because the dialogs are shown by showing the layers. Um, and let's go to the main event sheet and here we see what's going on actually. If you go and look, maybe you might have noticed just a minute ago, this doesn't quite look like the uh, interface uh, I showed you when running the application. Uh, the buttons were blue here and you had an hover effect, for example. Well, that's the reason is because the buttons are styled using CSS. Um, and for that styling, I've included a CSS file here called myfile.css. Um, and here you see all the identifiers, save button, list box, and stuff like that. Uh, they start with a hashtag, that's that's mandatory. And in fact, I have another uh, video on my YouTube channel on how to integrate CSS into your application. So uh, be sure to check this one out. So I'm not going to um, get deeper into this in this uh, video tutorial. However, the main uh, issue here is, or the main takeaway, let's, uh, let's call it, is you have to load the style sheet using the browser action. My file.css does this one here. And if you go to the main layout and you click, for example, uh, some button, you can see here the ID property has been filled into with save button without the hashtag in front of it. And that's a reference to this here. So then we just hide all, all of the dialogues. I've got a function to hide or show the dialogues. And then we check if the save game items exist. And the save game item uh, actually contains a JSON string, a JSON string, which is parsed using this JSON object here. Um, and actually what, what it does contain is uh, the name of the save game slot alongside with two extra attributes being the number of red objects and the number of green objects. So if you remember, let's run the game again. And then we press the load button, we select something. Here we have the red objects, the number of red objects in this save game is two, green objects in this save game is two. So. Uh, that's the things that are saved alongside with the name of the save game name in the JSON file. So that's what happens. So we check if it exists and if it does then this event will fire on item save games exists and then we get the item from local storage. We wait for a bit and then we load the file using the JSON. Uh, uh, we load the JSON from the local storage item value. So here we have the main logic and the main logic is actually just to execute these little things here, uh, these little buttons here. 
uh, we have the create button please notice that there's only one test button uh, object type we don't have uh, an object type for each button uh, that would be a lot of object types so instead uh, each uh, uh, test button has got a mode uh, property here and it's also got an instance variable called object type and if you check out what it means here this has got the mode create for green block this was had to as the mode create for red block and these one also have a mode clear save and load and then what happens is uh, on the mode create we just create the object with the object type in the instance variable called object type on the base layer just in the middle of the layout for save and load we call the save dialog show save dialog and the show load dialog functions and for clear we just clear the save games to restart over uh, testing this little test application so okay that's great as you see here we include the three dialog uh, event sheets let's start off with the save dialog so as mentioned we have a hide uh, save dialog and a show save dialog where we save uh, where we show the save dialog by uh, showing the layer here and hiding it by hiding the layer but also there's some uh, logic activation and deactivation going on um, each dialog has got its logic incorporated into a group and we set the group activated when we show the dialog and we deactivate the group when we hide the dialog but there's also a main logic if you call it here this is the main logic for creating save load clear etc uh, this is deactivated so if you click those buttons while the dialog is showing nothing happens so on show save dialog we refresh the save games which is a different function and we show the detailed text which is the little text showing how many green and red objects there are in that save game so and the save game lists is the uh, list visible on the uh, dialog uh, we clear the items and then we loop through the, each key of the save games dictionary and we just add that to the uh, list on the screen so on the save game logic so there's also a button here we call it and also there's not too many buttons created just a single button here and that button also has a mode and if we click the button with the mode save and the text is not called quote meaning uh, there's something in the text input it's the user has given the save game a name um, then we'll set the JSON red objects to the count of the red blocks and the green objects to the count of the green blocks in the JSON file um, and if it has an input text then we'll hide the save if the save game excuse me if the save games dictionary already has the input text that means we should overwrite in that case we will hide the save game dialog and show the confirmation dialog but that if it doesn't have that we will just show um, we will just hide the save game dialog and then we have to wait for a teeny weeny little bit of seconds uh, in order to get to the next uh, game loop uh, in order to hide effectively hide the save dialog before we start saving to local storage here because otherwise um, these uh, events will take up some cpu time and uh, the hide save uh, hide save dialog function will actually seem to be hanging and the, the, the dialog will stay on the screen for a bit too long so that's why we ha just wait for 0.5 seconds it's faster than uh, just uh, calling this and then waiting for the local storage uh, to complete so uh, on button click for cancel we then hide the save dialog and whenever we select something else in the list we will uh, set the text of the text input to the selected text of the list so we can change the name for example uh, and also we will uh, set the JSON uh, object to um, the selected the, to the save games dot get selected text and we will parse it and then 
we pick the detail text again there is only one detail text object type but uh, there is an instance variable called id which is red and green respectively and then we will set the text to uh, red objects will be json.get red objects and json.get green objects that's actually what this set here great so if we then switch to the load dialog, it's very, very similar. So the save load dialog and the hide load dialog do exactly the same as the save dialog. And refreshing also does the same. Here there is a little difference. Um, instead of when doing a load, we will just load the game from the selected text. If the selected item differs from minus one, which means that if there is something selected, yes or no. If there's nothing selected, the selected item will be minus one and this will not do anything. Um, and then, which means that we can load the green and then hide the save game dialog. The load game dialog, excuse me. So very similar to what we already saw in the save games dialog, but then for loading the game. And here we have the confirmation dialog, which is shown whenever we, the, the save game already exists and we need to override it. And the hide and show confirmation dialog works in exactly the same way. Uh, but the confirmation dialog, when we say yes in the override, we will add the key uh, to the JSON to the save games. We will save it to the local storage and hide the confirmation dialog. Uh, again, wait 0.5 seconds and save the game slots into uh, text input dot text. And now we'll just hide the confirmation dialog, of course. So basically, that's it. How to uh, make a generic uh, load and save dialog. Um, as always, please like and subscribe. And I will leave a link in the description of the video to the Sira store where you can pick up this uh, little template. Thank you for watching.